Uh, are we up? Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, and I want to reiterate the minister's comments about how important this event is and how well organized it is, and the agenda looks brilliant, so kudos to everyone on the team. It looks wonderful. Um, I'm going to spend 10, 15 minutes going over and presenting the most current data we have on sexual assaults from Statistics Canada, drawing on different data sources. I'm going to give the presentation in English. However, if you have any questions in French, no problem. I sometimes break the rules of grammar. I'm sorry, but that's reality for me. So again, preamble. Uh, I try with all my heart. And I also try to make sure I do this correctly. So here's a test. I did it right. Okay. Okay, these are technical issues. It makes me feel calmer that I can control the clicker. So there's three key messages that I think everyone needs to leave this room with. Many of these messages you will not find surprising, but let's reiterate it so that we're all on the same page. Over the past several decades, the overall crime rate in Canada has gone down for both violent and non-violent crime. However, sexual assault rates, not so. In fact, in the most recent 2014 GSS, for the first time in the cycle of that survey, women's rates of violent victimization were higher than men. An important thing to consider. There are certain groups of Canadians that are more at risk. Women, women between the ages of 15 and 24, Aboriginal women whose rates of victimization sexually assault are three times greater than non-Aboriginal women. In addition, we also know children who had been victimized uh, before the age of 15 are also at greater risk of being a victim of a sexual assault as an adult. Overall, we know that reporting to police for sexual assault victims has not changed over time. Very few report, and this has been consistent over many years. It's not a new phenomenon. It's been ongoing, and it hasn't changed. Again, see, I have trust issues. There we go. Okay. Uh, I would like to spend just a minute talking about the different databases that we use uh, to look at sexual assault. The first one is the General Social Survey on Victimization, which is critical when we're looking at crimes that aren't reported to police. This data set, uh, we call or do personal interviews with Canadians asking about their, pre their experiences of victimization over the previous 12 months. Um, it's important for us to get at this information so we understand what's reported, what's not reported. Further to that, we can get information about who the perpetrator was, impacts and consequences, PTSD, a wealth of information that helps get at information we can't get at, with police data. Uh, the GSS is also critical in getting information on spousal violence, dating violence, as well as child maltreatment statistics, which again are all types of crimes that do not get reported to the police. A second critical data point is police reported data. We get this information on an annual basis. The data that we collect and that we publish is founded incidents. Founded incidents are when the police establish that a law has been broken. Uh, a report is t extracted and given to Stats Canada and we go through several months of cleaning, uh, verifying, uh, processing the data to come up with reliable statistics. We collect data on 200 criminal offenses. So over time, we can look at changes for different crime types, violent versus non, by region, by CMA. So it is a wealth of information. Another uh, critical data point is criminal court survey data. And here we can look at how sexual assault cases are handed, handled through the court process. However, there is some limit in that we don't get a lot of information about the victim from that data set. However, Within Statistics Canada now, we're doing a lot of work linking different data sets so that we can get at more information that we couldn't do so in the past. So next one. Great. Um, so what does the GSS measure? And I mean, Carol went through the law 
criminal code for sexual assault. When we talk to Canadians, we don't use, were you a victim of sexual assault level one? Canadians wouldn't understand it. There are three very specific questions we ask Canadians over the past 12 months. Did you experience unwanted sexual touching? That is, has anyone ever touched you against your will in any sexual way? By this, I mean anything from unwanted touching or grabbing to kissing or fondling. Has anyone forced you or attempted to force you into any unwanted sexual activity by threatening you, holding you down, or hurting you in some way? And then the last category, sexual activity where the person was unable to consent was just, excuse me, added in 2014. Has anyone subjected you to a sexual activity which you were not able to consent? Were you drugged, intoxicated, manipulated, or forced in ways other than physicality? Now, all of these items meet the criminal threshold of a sexual assault. And this is how we capture the information. 12 months for the general population. If someone was in a spousal relationship or had contact with their ex-spouse, be it common law or legal, married, we would ask in the previous five years whether they would ever experienced this at the hands of a spouse. Okay. So here are some key statistics that I think are important to, to focus on. Um, we know that men, well, women are more likely to be a victim of a, violent, uh, a sexual assault, and specifically 550,000 incidents in 2014, a significantly larger amount than the 80,000 reported by men. When we take that number and put it into a rate, for women, that's 37 incidents per 1,000. So I know people are challenged mathematically, but if you think of it in, if there's 200 women in this room, that would mean seven perhaps were a victim of a sexual assault in the previous 12 months. If there were 200 Aboriginal women, women, that would, number would jump to 22. So uh, perhaps being a victim of one of those sexual assaults in the previous 12 months, 22 individuals of 200. It's a large number. And when we put it in a rate, sometimes it hides it. So we, we need to conceptualize what the rate means in a, a room full of people. It gives it more of a tangible entity. When we look at specific regions in Canada, the territories have higher rates of sexual assault, as do the Western provinces, uh, specifically uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan. In 2015, the total number of all sexual assaults reported by police as founded and that were cleared by charge was just over 9,000 or about 43% of the sexual assault incidents. Victims of violence turned to others for support. Specifically, 14% of violent crime victims contacted at least one source, most often a social worker or a psychologist. We know that women are more likely than males to reach out for support services. Uh, some Justice Canada studies looked at reasons for not reporting uh, child maltreatment, and uh, frequent response was that the individual felt that they would not be believed, they felt ashamed or embarrassed. In the most re recent GSS, we asked respondents retrospectively whether they'd been a victim of child maltreatment and whether that incident ever was reported to the authorities or the police, 93% of adults who said they had been victimized prior to the age of 15 said it was never brought to the attention of any type of authority, be it Child Protective Services or the police. So an, a very important data element is trend. Are things getting better, staying the same, going up or down? When we look at the blue line, which is the at the top, those are rates from the sexual assault data points from the GSS. So this is uh, whether it's reported or not to police. And what we can clearly see is things have not changed. Uh, over the past decade, the rate has stayed the same. What's not on the slide is the rates for both robbery and physical assault that are captured through the GSS. And over the past 10 years, both rates have gone down significantly. For robbery, the decrease has been 39% over the past decade, while physical assault, it was decreased by 35%. And again, this is when sexual assault has stayed stable. 
This is the reason why currently women have higher rates of victimization according to the GSS, because of the stability of the sexual assault. The orange trend line uh, reflects uh, data from police services, but again, we know that many victims of sexual assault do not report to police, so this is an underestimation, underestimation of the actual number. Again, in 2014, as the minister already has spoken to, the large majority of victims of sexual assault never reported to the authorities. Oh. On this slide, I want to focus your attention on reporting rates. Again, the data is from the GSS, and looking at sexual assault reporting rates to police versus robbery, as well as physical assault. So 38% of victims of physical assault reported to police, whereas 54%, I want to make sure I get this right. 34% of physical of violence victims reported to police, 54% of victims of robbery, and then for sexual assaults, only 5%. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning, these uh, proportions of people reporting to police haven't changed. It also hasn't changed over time for victims of robbery or physical assault. So there's something else going on overall. What are the reasons for reporting or not reporting? There's many. For sexual assault victims, seven in 10 felt that the crime wasn't important enough or felt that it was a personal matter and that they would uh, manage it informally on their own. However, it's important to note that four in 10 stated that they felt the police would not have considered the incident important enough, felt that there was a lack of evidence, or be believed that the offender would not be convicted or adequately punished. What's not on, sl on the slide are some other data points that I think are important. Uh, victims of sexual assault who choose, chose not to report were three times more likely than physical assault victims who chose not to report to state that they felt, um, they were concerned that others would find out about their victimization. So this was the biggest concern that it would get out there. In addition, they're twice as likely as victims of a physical assault to say they didn't want to bring shame to their family. So this was a critical barrier for many victims of sexual assault. So this next slide focuses on the fact that though victims of phys uh, sexual assault might not be reporting to the police, they are reaching out. They're reaching out to victim services seeking help. This slide shows uh, the total number of victims uh, seeking services from different uh, victim services across Canada on snapshot day. And on that day, just under 11,000 uh, people went through different victim services. What's important to note is a quarter of them, or more than a quarter, were there because of a sexual assault. And in fact, three in 10 women were there because of a sexual assault issue. So they are finding uh, help through different vehicles. Uh -huh. Okay. Again, this slide I wanted to point out again, looking at the rates, and this is from police data, which regions in Canada have the highest rates of uh, sexual assault. Again, the three territories, as well as the western provinces of Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Sorry. Okay, this is a blank slide. Um, I'm going to take a bit of time to walk you through this. This is some preliminary results for a study that's going to come out hopefully the end of spring, early summer. Uh, as I mentioned at the very outset, it's really difficult for us to follow an incident or an offender through police to court to the correctional system. The Canadian data systems are not integrated. They don't flow in a nice, really easy data mining way. It's just not like that. So in, in order for us to understand how sexual assault cases versus physical assault cases are being treated in police to courts, we need to merge uh, a large data sets to get at this type of information. So this is a unique research project that we've been working on for about six to eight months, and it's very timely. Um, what we did is we took six years of police records and linked them to court data. And what we 
the main research question was, what was the drop-off rate, the attrition rate, for both physical assaults as well as, as well as sexual assaults? We wanted to compare sexual assaults with something else, so we have information to figure through. So I'm going to talk, walk through six numbers slowly so that I don't freak you out with too many numbers. There's no math test. Okay. So, in the six years of data, what we found that there were approximately 94,000 sexual assaults reported by police in Canada as founded. A law had been broken. Over the same time period, there was approximately 940,000 physical assaults reported by police as founded. A law had been broken. So then the next question is, how many of these resulted in a charge being laid? Now, uh, police will lay a charge when they've got an accused. Uh, they can't lay a charge if they can't find the accused. So often the number is going to get dropped down because also uh, police have discretionary prerogative, uh, div diversionary programs. Uh, the accused could have died. There are many reasons why charges might not have been laid. So the next number will be smaller. So, of the 94,000 sexual assaults, 40,000 resulted in a charge being laid. That's about 4 in 10, 42%. When we look at physical assaults, 450,000 of those incidents resulted in a charge being laid. That's about 48%, a larger proportion. 6, 7% difference. So the next step is, okay, how can we find these people in the court data? So they've been charged. Where are they in the court data? So now we have five years of court data that we link to the police records. Okay, didn't work. What we found in the court data was that there was 19,000 of those 40,000 in the court data. And I want to make sure I'm getting the number right, so I'm taking my time. So that's just about 50%. So 50% of those sexual assault incidents where there was a charge laid, we found in the court data. When we compare it to the physical assault, is it up there? Uh, 75%. So there's the biggest change. So again, amongst the sexual assault cases, when we found them in the court records, it was just around 50%. For physical assault, it was 75%. So the next number is the attrition rate. And the attrition rate means the dropout. So we take the total number that we started with and how much is left. So the drop-off rate for sexual assaults was 79%. For the physical assault, it was 64%. So again, this is preliminary results. We're still working on the paper, and there's still many questions we're still going to look at. Uh, we haven't finished crunching all the numbers. The next steps of the study are to analyze the court outcomes of these cases. That is, what proportion had a guilty verdict? What were the sentencing outcomes, again, between sexual assault and physical assault to give, you know, compare contrast? And to look at the final attrition rate. This next slide are footnotes, because we haven't published it, but you don't have to read through those. <laughs> Due diligence. Uh, we, it can't be us without footnotes. Uh, this last slide is, a, I'll spend like 30 seconds. The most current data from 2014-15, looking at a flow chart, chart for court case outcomes from adult criminal court where the charge was the most serious decision was related to a sexual assault. So in the top left-hand corner, corner, you'll see that there was 2,500 completed cases where the most serious decision was related to sexual assault. Of these, just over four, just over four in 10 resulted in a guilty, guilty finding, while a similar proportion were stayed or withdrawn. When there was a finding of guilt for sexual assault in the case, almost six in 10 accused were sentenced to custody, while 18% 18 18 were sentenced to probation. Overall, the mean length of custody was 255 days. It's an important to note that's probably an underestimation because we can't uh, 
control for remand. We do not know how much time the person was held in remand, so that is an underestimation. Finally, on the, at the very bottom of the slide, I'd like to draw your attention to that long black line. Overall, uh, from the first court appearance to the final decision, it took about 11 months or 310 days. Um, and, and that's it. Thank you for your time. <laughs>